Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host, who might be a ghost. Welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual literature that I have found in my travels. Uh, don't have a fu funny little thing to say there after that. Uh, my mind just went blank. Uh, but yeah, today it is Short Story Tuesday, a lovely day where I talk about uh, you know, all the short form literature that I, that I, that I can get my hands on, uh, and is worth talking about, uh, often is the case, and today is another example of that, finding a lot of horror anthologies, um, horror short story, uh, maybe that's just because horror, like, lends itself to the short story format, uh, or maybe it's just because people love writing horror short stories. Um, or maybe that's all the local library carries. Um, who knows? But uh, yeah, so today I'm, I want to talk about a short story uh, that focuses on minstrel shows of all things uh, and a sudden and terrifying transformation from a wholesome father into something different. I am talking about Mr. Bones by Paul Thoreau. Um, an interesting anthology of, I want to say, horror short stories, although horror doesn't really seem to fit this classification, uh, because a lot of these stories are scary, but they're not suspenseful, they are, like, so I can't label them that. Thrilling? Thrillers? Uh, a series of thriller short stories? Um, I don't know, horror comes in many different forms, so maybe that's the best way to um, talk about it. But yeah, so I want to talk about the titular short story, again, the, talking about menstrual shows and um, horrifying transformations. Uh, but first, let's talk about Paul Thoreau. Uh, something I didn't know, I've never heard about him before, but he has an extensive back catalog of books uh, from all over the years. Uh, he's written a lot of uh, books, a lot of short story collections. Um, he's published a lot in the the New Yorker and, and other um, other magazine newspapers, uh, etc. Um, he's a bit of a controversial figure in that he often writes himself into his stories, but he writes other people he knows as well um, and disparages them in some sort of way. Uh, he's also been labeled as misogynist, a misanthrope. Like he he says a lot of inflammatory things. Uh, seems like a real jerk off. Much like um, uh, when I read this, I got I got Harlan Ellison vibes. Um, it, that it might the story might be a little misogynistic. Some of these characters might be misogynistic. Um, uh, but you know that's I guess that's something you know to have a conversation about um, and uh, wonder why we typically prop up so many authors who are transparently like terrible at, uh, you know, writing women and, and such. Um, that's an important discussion to have. Again, I got this from my local library. Uh, don't forget to patronize your local libraries. Um, I do, so let's, let's, without further ado, let's talk about uh, Mr. Bones. Um, I'll do a little summary, a little analysis, and we will move on from there. So uh, the story focuses on uh, Mr. Bones starts um, with uh, an unnamed narrator, talking about uh, their father, how their father is kind of a pushover in his job, and also uh, with the, the narrator's mother, uh, how the the father just does whatever she says, um, and he's, uh, like, no matter what he does, it doesn't seem to be good enough for his mother. Uh, so um, the mother tasks the father with buying a house, uh, and... Like, he searches around the house, but everything seems to be not good enough for the mother character. And finally, uh, the father finds a house within the price range and just decides, hey, let's buy this house. Which the mother isn't too happy about, but she she deals with it. After buying the house, like, the mother is, is um, like, she constantly wants improvement. So the father goes out of his way to ask friends for help and, like, uh, do home improvements so that the house is up to the standards uh, that the mother wants it to be, although it's clear that it's never going to be up to her standards because, you know, she's very picky and, like, 
um, the narrator even notes that it, the mom is kind of nagging without real reason. Uh, so, you know, the father is just overworked and, and not very happy. And then interestingly, the narrator notes that the father comes home one day uh, and he starts to behave a little differently. Um, he starts to, uh, like, uh, he asks the mother to play on the piano for him, although the father is very bad at singing uh, <laughs> and doesn't seem to get better over the course of the of the short story. Uh, and then um, slowly but surely the father starts uh, to go by the name of Mr. Bones. Uh, so a, and he says he'll be participating in a minstrel show. Now, for those that don't know, a minstrel show is a very racist type of play musical thing where people dress up as black caricatures, uh, often wearing blackface. Uh, and they, um, and they do, you know, they, they portray black people. And sure, sometimes there's a story being told and there's a lot of entertainment. But at its heart, it's very racist. And it's a racist institution that you, you don't see um, these days as much. I don't really know. I've never really uh, seen a minstrel show or um, outside of Hollywood, of course. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, like, the dad is going to be uh, participating in a minstrel show, which kind of... Uh, causes everyone to be alerted, alarmed by that. I don't know if they're alarmed because the dad is white or if the dad is black. Uh, Thoreau doesn't make the race clear, and I'll explain why a little later. Why it needs, why the race in this case needs to be a little clearer um, for, for I guess to understand more about this. Uh, uh, the story. The dad adopts this Mr. Bones caricature, which I've, I've looked up and is an actual like uh, a character in many uh, in many minstrel shows. Mr. Bones for uh, for some reason, uh, and so uh, he like he uh, he starts insulting his children, calling them liars or or mean. He calls his wife ugly, like. Uh, basically adopting a very mean personality. Uh, one day the narrator uh, finds, uh, wakes up uh, in the middle of the night and sees that the dad is like staring over them and watching them uh, and like uh, is like, give me a smooch, son. And it, it's uh, the, the main, the narrator is very scared about this and it's just like, I don't know if that's my father anymore. Uh, it's, it's, it's a weird and like it's weird what's going on with him and he like the narrator even follows his dad to work and his dad is different at work he hasn't adopted the mr bones personality but he does see um uh, his father hanging out with um five other people who are uh, supposed to be in the menstrual show uh and he's he's friendly with them so eventually like the entire family goes to the menstrual show uh the narrator makes an attempt to just leave um before uh their father shows up and tries not to watch it um the yeah so the um like after the show like they all drive home and the father begins acting normal again and with time the the mr bones character is completely gone uh there's no evidence of, of him anymore uh and then the story ends with the family sitting down to watch tv uh and it's it's shown that they're uh, they're watching the little rock um uh the little rock arkansas um uh, integration uh, event that happened in the 1950s where uh, black students were admitted to high schools um, and uh, like white people protested all over and said this is wrong this is bad and um, so the family is watching this uh, indicating that the story is taking place in the 1950s and um, uh, the father just sort of watches in horror as that, as that goes on and the story ends there. I want to talk a little bit in terms of analysis I want to talk a little bit about uh, race in the story um, because minstrel shows are very racist uh, events um, that, that have taken place you know throughout American history uh, as a way of providing entertainment in a way of disparaging people of color um, often black people because they, they uh, the car uh, performers wear blackface and pretend to be black um, or uh, like caricatures of, of black people so um it's it's uh, it doesn't say whether the the family in this scenario is white or black and i feel it's it's it, it's important to know because if the family's white then the 
uh, then the main character, the, or the, the father in the story who's taking on the Mr. Bones identity, uh, at the very end he's seeing the consequences of his actions. Like he's seeing this integration happen and he's realizing that, yeah, you can pretend to be um, a black character all you want for entertainment, but that, that's nothing compared to the horrors that the black community is facing, especially at this time and even in the present right now. Like, um, uh, it's uh, like... You're sort of real. You're sort of facing the consequences of of just seeing black people portrayed as as cartoons, um, and that people don't want um, you know the, those people uh, in their schools with them, uh, which is which is terrible, of course. But if the character is black and they're being forced in some way to participate in this minstrel show, and there were a lot of um, black people who participated in minstrel shows and had their own version of that, uh, and that didn't make them any less racist because you were still wearing black faces and 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 pretending to be a cartoon character for the sake of uh of white audiences a lot of the time and so if uh like a black person is doing that like if the father is black and himself then i think it, it takes on another connotation for the story because uh like um it's sort of forcing the whole family to uh, like see what the effect of the minstrel show is having on their um on, on their life, uh, on on the 1950s, like uh, this is the reality that they're forced to confront with, or that they they have to be confronted with, and it's it's not a it's not a pleasant reality. It's it's a, it's pretty dark and bleak, uh, and there's you can even suggest that the father didn't really have a say in whether or not he participated. Like his coworkers kind of made him do it, um, but the story doesn't go that far, and I think I'm assuming a lot more than than is going on. As for the transformation, um, it's kind of a horrifying thing to happen in the story. And there's a lot of um, explanations for why it could have happened. Uh, you could say that due to the father's mistreatment in, this, um, in the uh, story, um, uh, once he was asked to participate in the menstrual show, he adopted the Mr. Bones character, and that allowed him to, to you know, get back at everything that was been wrong to him. Like, he was able to sass his wife back rather than just accepting her nagging. Uh, he was able to tease his children for all the stupid things that they'd done, and, like, he was, like, he's able to, um, get one back at society. Although, given that he, at work, he was still, like, rather tame and then kind of sad, it seems like he was only treating his family this way as the Mr. Bones character, uh, which is a lot of pent-up rage, and maybe that's where it turns. Like, if, if, if society doesn't allow you to act out your anger, it might, you might turn it inwards towards the family, which is a weird, weird message, but, like, it's often the case that that happens. You could also argue that, um, like, the transformation itself is due to the cognitive dissonance needed to deal with the racism of, of a menstrual show. Uh, like, do you want to acknowledge that you're portraying a black person very cartoonishly? Like, I don't think anyone wants to do that, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Latino, whether you're anything. Like, that's kind of a hard thing to accept even in the 1950s when racism was more, you know, casual and people didn't really, you know, care as much, I would say. Uh, but, um, if, so you could say that the Mr. Bones character was the, the, the father having a sort of a break with reality and adopting the Mr. Bones character in a vaudevillian sort of way to avoid having to address the fact that Mr. Bones in itself is is racist. Uh, it's something to think about there. Um, I Paul Thoreau doesn't really explain why the transformation happens. You could attribute it to any number of things. And, like... I, I, I like that about the story. Um, it's it's a different sort of horror that leads you, it leads you to the point without telling you what it is and then you, you have to think about it some more. I also like the ending uh, and how like out of nowhere it is. Like it, the story doesn't even tell you that it takes place in the 1950s. Uh, you, you, you just go through the menstrual show and it's kind of interesting and scary and also funny to see the father go through this transformation. Uh, and then at the very end it's just like you see the integration happening in schools. And it, it, it's interesting because it, it kind of turns the menstrual show upside down, where it's like, ha ha, very funny, a menstrual show. Oh, wait, that, this is something that uh, people of color actually experience on a daily basis, being ridiculed and mocked for being black or 
brown or whatever whatever color uh, uh so it, it turns the minstrel show into an unfunny possibly even more horrifying endeavor uh why did the father participate in this um it's unclear and unclear why he did that but like uh it's something to, to think about and like it, it gives you more clarity in why the father might be like refusing to accept what's happening, um, accept the, the conditions that he's been thrusted into. One thing that I don't like about this is the misogyny uh, in the story, how the mother is just portrayed as a nag and like doesn't even seem to like her husband. And it's very like, why, why would you write a character like this? I, I feel like the misogyny isn't as necessary. You could you could turn that um, the anger towards the mother character and focus it on something else and you wouldn't need to make the story um, so misogynistic and there's a there's a couple other bits and pieces throughout the story that kind of have a tinge of misogyny and some of it feels intentional on uh um uh, Thoreau's part particularly with the story the theories uh and other times it seems like it's just his writing style how he he doesn't have a particularly high view of women although I haven't read his other books so you know I should probably um give a give consideration to that before I just judge him on that so that's that's true and then another issue that I have with this story is the the um, the wordliness uh, um, of Thoreau, particularly because he likes to use large words. And like I say, if you're going to use large words, at least have a reason to use them. And I don't think Thoreau has one. Like he uh, he likes to use big words, but those big words don't offer value to the sentence. He could have used a smaller word and made it more accessible to everybody. Uh, and I'm not saying like don't use large words in your stories, like, but like have a reason for doing it. Don't just use it to appear fancy. And I feel like that's the issue here is that sometimes it seems like the way Thoreau writes, he's writing for himself and an audience of nobody else. Um, I, I, do, I do wonder like if his, if his other books have that. Um, uh, I, I would be, if you've read more of Thoreau's books, please comment below and I'd love to hear from you about that. Overall, I would say I loved this particular story and there's a number of other stories in, um, in uh, Mr. Bones that, it, that are fantastic and, and lovely and um, are worth finding and reading. I don't think, I wouldn't say the, uh, the, the entire book doesn't necessarily hold up and I would say hold off on buying the book or seeking out the book. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of these stories have been printed in other places that you can find. Um, I, I really liked Mr. Bones and I also really loved, uh, um, the Furies, where a man is confronted by all the women he's been wronged by and, or where he, all the women he has wronged in the past. Uh, definitely really good and like, um, I, I would say even better than Mr. Bones, and I was going to talk about it, but I, I decided to focus on this one instead. So, um, yeah, definitely seek that out. And I, 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 I guess I recommend the book, even if, if it doesn't completely hold up. If you want to comment on anything I said, if you've read this book before, if you're familiar with Paul Thoreau's books, absolutely comment below. I would love to hear from you. It'd be great to have a discussion about this book since it was it, it piqued my interest. Uh, otherwise, feel free to like, share, and subscribe so that other people may find out about... Uh, uh, this book and Paul Thoreau and many, uh, many other uh, things about Short Story Tuesday that I will talk about in the near future. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, otherwise, I wish you the best of luck and your weird uh, and minstrel showy travels. Don't, don't put on a minstrel show. Farewell.